Number 33. Calculate the mole fraction of each solute and solvent. And then we have letter D. Now in this case, we have 0.372 grams of tetrahydropyridine, which is C5H9N, in 125 grams of chloroform, which is CHCO3. Okay, so we want to calculate the mole fraction of each solute and solvent. Now, it's good practice to just be able to identify which one of these is a solute and which one of these is a solvent. We could use the little trick of the numbers. How many letters are in solute? There's six. And how many letters are in solvent? I guess seven. So they translate into numbers. Just know that the solute is always the smaller um, compound or molecule that is being dissolved or put into a solvent. The solvent is usually a liquid media. Um, and together, a solute plus a solvent makes up the total solution, which has eight letters. So in this case, we have 0.372 grams of the tetrahydropyridine, which is being put into the chloroform, which is CHCO3. By this wording and looking at the numbers, the C5H9N is the solute, and the CHCO3 is the solvent. But for this question, we just have to find the mole fraction for both of them. Well, what's the mole fraction uh, formula? It's this right here, right? Maybe I'll put it right in the middle here. Now, mole fraction is represented by capital X. So anytime that you see capital X, that's a mole fraction. And... A mole fraction can only be done for one compound or one substance at a time. Since we need to find the mole fraction for both C5H9N and CHCl3, we'll be doing this formula twice. Yay. <laughs> but anyway, if you're trying to find the mole fraction for C5H9N, the moles of that specific compound has to go in the numerator. And then if you're finding the mole fraction for CHCl3, those moles have to go in the numerator, but the denominator is the same. It's always a total moles. Just like any other fraction, right? A fraction is always part divided by whole. This is no different. But the thing here is that mole, 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 gram, gram, yikes, right? We don't have the right units. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take the 0.372 grams of the tetrahydropyridine, C5H9N, and go to the moles of the C5H9N. And then we gotta do the same thing for the chloroform. 125 grams of CHCO3, go to uh, moles of the CHCl3. Okay, so going from grams to moles, back to basics, back to the beginning of chem, right? If you have a gram of some substance I just titled it A, and you want to go to moles, you always divide by the molar mass, which is found on the periodic table. So we're going to the periodic table to find out what the molar mass is of C5H9N. You have five carbons, so I'm going to times that by the 12.01, that's the number on my periodic table for carbon, plus nine hydrogens, that's 1.008, and then I'm just going to add the extra nitrogen, which is 14.01. So five times 12.01 plus nine times 1.008 plus 14.01, just making sure that all my numbers look good. That looks good to me. So my molar mass is 83.132. So I'm going to divide the 0.372 by the 83.132. So 0.372 divided by that number. And I get roughly a small number, 0 0.00447. I guess we should extend it a little bit. 4475. Okay, that's the total number of moles of the tetrahydropyridine. Now we have to do the same for chloroform. Um, CHCl3. 
Um, what do we got? Carbon, 12.01. Sorry, every time I look, I hear the word chloroform, I always think of back in the day, I think maybe the 1920s, 1930s. Don't quote me on the decade, 1940s maybe. Um, when there was a burglary at, at a home, they would have, you know, the burglar would have chloroform drenched in a, like a cloth. And then whoever opened the door, they would put the chloroform over their face and the fumes from the chloroform would knock out the homeowner. How fun is chemistry? <laughs> but that that's what I think of. But if you know the decade, let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm quite curious. I'm probably going to look it up after this video is done. But onward. Uh, 1.08 plus three times... Um, What's chlorine? 35.45. But interesting facts like that. That's why chemistry is very interesting. 1.008 plus 3 times 35.45. By the way, do not try that at home. This is a public service announcement. Okay. Now we're good. <laughs> Um, 12.01 plus that plus three times 35.45. Okay. And we're going to divide that number by 119.368. So 125 divided by that number. 1.047, I guess two. That looks good to me. Okay, so that's the total number of moles that we have of the chloroform. Now, we can start putting together our mole fractions. So I'm going to have two of them. I'm going to have an X and an X. A mole fraction for the C5H9N, and then I'm going to have a mole fraction for the CHCl3. So they're both going to equal to some type of fraction, obviously. If I'm trying to find the mole fraction for the C5H9N, those moles will go on the numerator, on the top. So 0 0.004475 on the numerator. And then for the CHCl3, I have 1.0472. But now the question is, what's going to be the denominator? Well, the denominator is always the total number of moles. If we have these moles just in my solution, how would I find the total? Yeah, I would have to add those two numbers up. So 0 0.004475 plus 1.0472. Numbers look good to me. So I have 1.051675 total moles. And that is the, num the, 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 the denominator for both of them. 1.051675 moles 1.051675 okay so let's set this up we have the C5H9N and then we have the CHCl3 okay so 0 0.004475 let's do the mole fraction for the tetrahydropyridine divided by that total number, I get really, 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 really low number, 0 0.00426, we'll say. And then let's do it for the chloroform, 1.0472, divided by that number, and we get 0 0.996, that's good enough for me. Here are the two mole fractions. Just know that mole fractions do not have uh, any units. They are unit less. If you wanted to convert this into a percent, you could always just times by 100, and that will kind of give you an indication as to which one is, is more. You could, you could clearly see that the chloroform is more because, remember, the total fraction is always 1. So that's a good check. If you add these two mole fractions up together... You should get one. And there you go. So I hope this makes sense. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. I look forward to helping you in more problems. And keep working hard, okay? I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.